of uh, Senserva, and today I'm going to talk to you about uh, Azure Machine Learning, uh, Azure Notebooks, uh, as well as uh, something that we've created using the tools. So the Azure Machine Learning environment, it's uh, used for machine learning, um, but also for computes and large data processing, you know, very cool things like that. What I'm going to focus in on is uh, notebooks. So if you've used Jupyter notebooks before, they're uh, very similar. Uh, notebooks are going to be used for, you know, large data processing, uh, visualizations of data, you know, things of that nature. So um, what I'm going to show today is something that our team has built out. One of the things we find when we talk with our customers is that uh, uh, they may not know all of the connections that exist within Azure. A connection uh, in this context being uh, a relationship between Active Directory objects. And that, as an example, it's going to be uh, a user uh, is assigned the role of a global admin. That will be a connection. And whenever you have uh, connections like that that are well known, direct, you know, not not too crazy to understand. Where it can get a more complicated and tricky to understand is whenever you uh, whenever you look at other objects that may not be at the forefront of your mind, or uh, when you add levels of indirection in. So uh, other objects can be. You know, you're a member of a group, you have a role assigned, you have devices that a user owns, uh, a user can have permissions to a particular app. You know, all these things uh, create relationships between these objects. And uh, with indirection, if we go back to our example of user and global admin, instead of assigning it directly, a user can be a member of a group, and that group can be assigned global admin role, so that all members of the group get the role, but you don't have, but the role is not assigned directly to the person. So the user then has all the powers of a global admin without uh, being assigned the role directly. So uh, what we're looking at here, and what we've built out is a notebook to go and look at these connections that exist and uh, report on them, visualize them. Uh, this notebook, it runs off of data provided by uh, our uh, data connector to uh, the log analytics workspace. Uh, and then that log analytics workspace is connected to Azure Sentinel. So what we're going to do here uh, for a lot of the processing, you know, we use a Python library our team has built out called PyServa. We've left a install command here to uh, uh, in the template that's available on our GitHub so that uh, everyone can use this. We'll set up some environment variables and get ready to authenticate and call to the log analytics workspace. From there, we're going to gather up the data. And we show the data in both a tree and graph. So the tree is an HTML table that someone can look at, they can report on as well as, you know, drop into a, a presentation if they need, or they can export it to CSV PDF formats. The graph is going to be a network graph visual so that someone can look and see, 
you know, with bubbles and things like that, um, all the connections that exist. Now, we have these visuals done a couple different times. So we show first Active Directory connections. That's going to be, you know, your Active Directory objects like users, groups, roles, um, apps, things of that nature. What we can do then is extend that into RBAC uh, objects. So um, we pair our data and we leverage the uh, UEBA tables from Microsoft. That's the user and entity behavior analytics tables um, to show what the, what the uh, mappings from say Active Directory to a, uh, an RBAC object. That's gonna be like your subscriptions, your VMs, things like that. Um, and then uh, we can show, we can show the Active Directory side and the RBAC side separately, and then we can put them together so you can see them all at once. Here in this cell, we're going to gather up the data, show it out. Uh, we have, it creates a uh, drop-down menu here. What we do with this drop-down is allow for someone to uh, filter out up. Um, the results based on what they want to see. So if you if you're looking at a at the results and something sticks out to you, you can uh, filter here so that you can zero in on that particular uh, user or object of whatever of concern. So when we're showing the table, you know, the, this here is going to gather up all the data, process all of it. And from that point, now we visualize the data. So here we have an HTML table and we order the objects that are shown in the order of the power that they have. What we mean, what we determine as power is going to be risk Risk is going to be, you know, things that are potential security concerns that our code has detected. Things like if you're an application, you know, you have uh, secrets that have that are used to authorize into your app that have been created recently, or um, for a user, they've been consenting permissions to a lot of things recently, you know things like that. Impact here is going to be what the relative uh, power in the network can be. So what that can mean is that you have a user and they're a guest user, they've been made, they're outside your network, but if they don't have anything assigned to them, they have no rights to do anything not going to have a ton of impact to the network. Whereas if you have a user, it's your admin, you know, you know, there's nothing wrong with their account, but they have the global admin account, you know, they can have a very large impact to your network. And taking in the risk and impact together creates an overall uh, score to uh, each object, and this helps organize where uh, our team has determined to look for particular objects. So with this table, you can uh, explore it, kind of see what our reasonings are behind the ratings we give. So we can see that this spy app for Benedict had a bunch of permissions assigned to it. And then 
for this user account, they uh, they have a lot of high level um, roles assigned to them, as well as being owners of a particular group. So you can see that you know there's a lot that should be looked at for these particular objects at the top. You know, you can we have verbose details so that someone can look at more information about them. So we can see like this is an application, a user, this is a disabled user, as well as the IDs for each thing. So that uh, if something is trying to fly fly under the radar with a display name that looks similar, you can see the actual ID there. As well as showing, you can download this table and its data in a CSV or a PDF format. Now for the graph here, this is a bouquet graph. You can see that, you know, several things are represented on this graph. So you can see that for each node, you know, there is a shape, there is a color, and there's the connections that exist between the, sh the nodes. So things that are colored, so things are colored from green to red, in terms of severity to look at. Red being more severe. And then we have a hover menu to show what we're finding. So um, this particular user account, as we saw in the table, you know, is of concern based on the risk that was determined for it. And again, the data that feeds into the table also feeds into this graph. It's all, it, you know, it's just visualized in a different way. And someone can look and visualize this more. And all the different objects that we'll look at are in this legend here. So. Now, if we continue on to our next section with role-based access control, our team uh, does the work on looking into Active Directory. Microsoft's team will show the mappings between Active Directory objects and RBAC objects, and we extend the grading between our Active Directory um, conclusions into RBAC through the mapping. So then we have a table here to show a user account that has been made a owner of a particular subscription, a contributor to a different subscription, as well as an app that is an owner of a subscription. So, you know, we can extend the analysis that our system makes in this way. And in the same way, we can also graph out all the objects that we have. And uh, another cool thing that we do here is objects that are determined to be risky will also affect the grading of objects that they are connected to. That's something that we find to be um, a particular concern is that if uh, an application or a group is, you know, set up correctly, but the user that owns either of those it is compromised in some way, it puts those objects more at risk. So we, we try to evolve and modify the analysis so you can look and see in particular what objects 
are going to be uh, of more concern. And then we show them together. You know, they both are visualized and processed in the same format so that you can see more of them together. So we see our user account, our application, you know, all of this together for those who want to see it. And notebooks provide a great platform for showing all this. It's, you know, persistent, it's great, it runs in the background, you know, through a VM compute so that you're not hogging up the resources for your uh, system. So, and once you have all this data, you got a more informed view of your network and can go forward in the knowledge of what needs to be looked at right away. So this is what we've built out using the Azure Notebook environment. Great platform to use, highly recommended. Um, and uh, that's all uh, we're gonna talk about, all uh, we're gonna talk about today, but we hope soon. Thanks everyone.